Hey yo, what's up my little coders? Let me show you in this tutorial how to solve the Litco question 888, fair candy swap. Basically, what we need to do in this task is the following. Let's consider example 4. Imagine that we have Alice and Bob, and both of them have some candies in their pocket, but they don't have the equal amount of candies, so one person has a bit more than the second one, but because they're friends, they would like to exchange these candies, so that in the end, by exchanging just one candy each, then by the end they will have exactly the same amount of candies. And if we consider this example where for Alice we have this input array, so one candy of size 1, one candy of size 2, and one candy of size 5, and for the both we have one candy of size 2 and uh, candy of size 4, what we need to do is the following. In order to make everyone happy so that everyone will have the, exactly the same amount of candies, we will need to, Alice will need to give this huge candy of size 5 to the Bob, and Bob at the same time will need to give this big candy of size 4 to the Alice, so they swap these two candies, and in the end, after they swap, Alice will have 1, 2, 4, which is 7, and Bob will have 2 plus 5, which is also 7, so both of them will have the same amount of candies. This is basically what we need to do for this task. And the conditions are the following. It is guaranteed that Alice and Bob have different total amounts of candy, yes, which is good, and it's guaranteed that there exists an answer. So this is basically what we need to do for this task. Stay with me, I will quickly write the code and will be with you in a few seconds, and will explain to you everything. Okay, okay, guys, let me go with you through the code and explain you how it works. Okay, the first step is just to declare the integer array, which we're going to return in the end. And this array of size 2, which is exactly what we need to return. And the code result. Then we declare two variables, two integers, total A and total B. This, is, this will be used to basically store the total amount of candies which Alice and Bob have. On the next line, we have the hash set for Bob. Um, we are going to use the hash set to check if particular value exists inside the inside B array, and hash sets are perfect for that when you want to check if something exists or not. Because to check if the value exists or not inside the hash set, it's basically all one time complexity, which is super efficient. Of course, we will use additional space complexity, but that's fine because otherwise we would need to have like something like nested for loop which will make our time complexity to be just awful. So we need to use the hash set to solve it efficiently, guys. After that, a simple for loop, we are iterating through the, all the candies which Alice has, and we update our total A to calculate that. We are doing similar thing for B, however, we are also adding all the values which B has inside the hash set for B. After that, we need to calculate delta, or simply speaking, the change. And we're just taking B, subtracting, we're just taking total B, subtracting total A, and dividing by 2. So this delta might be negative or positive. If you consider the same example again, right? So 1 plus 2 plus 5 is 8, and then 2 plus 4 is 6. So then total B, which is 6 minus total A, divided by 2, will give, the Java will give us minus 1 in this case, so this will be our delta. And what it means, it means the following. If you're considering this example, if the delta is minus 1, and I would say we found the right candy, so this is our right candy, which Alice needs to give to Bob to make it equal in the end, and the delta is minus 1 in this case. So if we found it right, then if Alice gives this candy, she will expect in return, this candy plus delta, so 5 plus minus 1 will be 4, and Bob has 4, so they exchange them, and they have equal amount of uh, candies in the end. So delta is the change for which we're aiming. So remember, if Alice, for example, gives candy x, she expects in the end x plus delta. And after that, we are just simply iterating again through the A, and we are checking if the value which we need is inside b. So if set b contains a plus delta, then we just say that, okay, Alice gives this a, 
and Bob gives the a false delta, and then we just return it in the end. So if b has this value, we return. If not, we return now in the end, but they're promising us that we will not return now because it's guaranteed that there exists an answer, but still we need to return something in case if this condition didn't match, because otherwise the program just will not compile. Java will not allow us to do it, so we just return now in this case. So this is it, basically. I hope it makes sense, guys. So just understand delta, and yeah, we need to check if a plus delta is inside or not. If it is, we return straight away. Simply as that, guys. Okay, let me submit. Let's see what we will get. Perfect, guys. 98.7%. Um, however, guys, don't hold this video because I have a homework for you. Basically, in this solution, we are iterating every time through the BRA and adding all the values to the hash set. However, imagine the scenario when, for example, the BRA, the B input array for Bob is like super huge, whereas the input array for A is small. In this case, probably it would not be very optimal to, add, to iterate through the whole B and add every single value to the hash set because then the space complexity will be quite large. So it just we will consume a lot of space, whereas we would just be able to iterate through the A and add every single value to the A and then just, you know, instead in the end iterating through the A, we would iterate through the B and would apply just similar logic but in a reversed way. And it would be, it would save us a bit of space. Of course, it's like not a super huge improvement. However, in some cases, the program will work and will be a bit more optimized. So my homework for you is to implement this feature, see if you can do it or not. It's not the hard one, but yeah, just slightly improve your code, slightly optimize it and challenge your friends to see if they can do it or not. And guys, that's it from me and I will see you in the next video.